right, welcome back to the Maximum Lawyer Podcast. I'm Tyson Mudrix. Jim is on assignment. And today we have a couple of guys from InfraWare. Um, they're going to tell us about their deposition reporting service called Readback. And Readback was actually the title sponsor, one of the title sponsors of MaxLawCon 2021. First, we have Nick Mahurin. He's the founder and CEO. Dean Whalen is an attorney and former litigator who has been with the company for many years and is InfraWare's chief legal officer. Nick, tell us a little bit about yourself. Good morning, Tyson. Thanks for having us. And of course, you know, I was born and raised in Indiana, a flyover state. My favorite hobby, by the way, is flying. And I noticed on Twitter that you started that journey. So congrats on that. Uh, I'm a lifelong information technology entrepreneur, and I was educated as an engineer and have loved applying IT solutions to business problems for over 30 years now. Infor is definitely my most ambitious uh, endeavor of my career. It's approaching 20 years old and a workforce of nearly 300 people. At Infor, we like to say that we enable the performance of busy professionals in highly regulated industries, such as healthcare, insurance, and of course, the law. As you know, those fields have highly demanding documentation burdens, and we pull time and costs and other burdens out of the process with advanced technologies, including workflow automation, machine learning, and with four patents and some good success, we made about 15 acquisitions in our second decade. Today, we're saying goodbye to Steno to create an entirely new category of reporting for depositions. And we're calling it active reporting. It's a game changer and we're delighted to be here and tell you about it. Excellent. And uh, we'll get into some of the details of that in a little bit. Uh, Dean, tell us about yourself. Thanks, Tyson. Born and raised in Massachusetts, and uh, admitted to the bar in Massachusetts in 1985. I was an assistant district attorney for a few years, and then I went into the private practice of law in a small town. So I was a heavy litigator for over 20 years. And then I joined uh, a company that was a transcription company uh, that was and a court reporting company that was acquired by Nick's company. And here we are. Excellent. So... Nick, tell me about Readback. So what is what is it that you all do? Because we've not talked about that yet. Like, what do you do? I know at the conference you talked about what it is. You had a big reveal. But yeah. what is it that you all do for attorneys? Well, you know, we think of court reporting or, or stenographic reporting, Tyson, as, you know, uh, producing the verbatim um, official record of a deposition. And, you know, one of my favorite authors on the subject, Jim Garrity, likes to say, uh, depositions are the new trial. And so we know just how important depositions are in current and going forward uh, civil litigation. So what we do is sort of what court reporting firms have always done, or at least for the last hundred years or so, and provide that verbatim record. It's the how we do it that is so much different. And, you know, Dean, would you pick up on that being the attorney to tell Tyson about the yeah, and I think what we really have to do is define what the problem was. And, and so with, with stenographic reporting, uh, many litigators will tell you that there, there's high per page costs, um, high add-on fees, long turnaround times. Uh, and so with active reporting, we're kind of eliminating all of those problems. What we're going to give you with this is a certified transcript in one business day a rough draft an hour after the proceeding is done. And we're gonna give you a live stream of the actual text during the proceedings. That's gonna allow you to collaborate with experts, um, collaborate with co-counsel. So this, we believe that this is gonna revolutionize the deposition industry because of the speed. And like Nick says, we're giving a verbatim transcript, which is what traditional steno does and in my mind as an attorney a verbatim transcript is a verbatim transcript however you get it so this this question is for you dean because you've been on both sides of it right you've been on the you've been taking dep depositions you've had your clients depositions taken you know you've been on the court reporting side of things when you first heard about this, whenever, whenever Nick's company acquired your court reporting company that you're working for, like what were your initial thoughts? So I joined this company, uh, I joined a transcription company in 2005. And one of my favorite things I used to say is that 
they'll never get speech recognition to the point where you can have two two people understand what's going you know, the the engine understand two people at the same time well nick to his credit has four patents and a speech recognition engine that can do that that gets active reporting started and then we use the uh, humans to actually transcriptionists to actually produce the transcript so my first reaction was it's here right the technology to do this has arrived and nick mahuron is the guy to bring it so this is how we can create a new new category. I was skeptical in 2005, and now it's 2021, and here we are. I will tell you, Nick, I've talked to other attorneys about this, and they are skeptical, right? They're, yeah. they're like, well, does, what does he have patents for? I was like, yeah, he's got patents for it. Like, well, he, how's it with an otter? Like, like, listen, man, I, like, I'm going to let you answer, Nick, because I, I believe in you. I believe in you, <laughs> but I, I know that there's attorneys that have their doubts, but I because uh, sure. they said, well, why not? Why, why don't I just put otter up there? You know, like, why don't I do something like that? Oh, so answer sure. those, I'll answer the doubters. Yeah, well, sure. Of course. Uh, you know, if, if, that's why we're, we're excited about it because we're doing so, something meaningful. If you don't have any doubters, you probably weren't doing something revolutionary. You were trying to probably just polishing something that was already on the shelf. So let me talk to you about a couple of insights that came together to make this possible, Tyson. First, uh, you know, with uh, there's there's a there's clearly a shortage of steno operators, and so we've struggled to cover jobs for clients for years now. It's gotten worse and so forth during the pandemic, and you know I'm kind of an outsider, right? Because I've been working in the space of AI, machine learning, speech recognition, and documentation for decades, but I'm a little bit newer to uh, to court reporting, and I was really stunned to see just how how slow and I would argue ineffective, some of our services in court reporting were because they were just antiquated to match what the industry expected. So what I was finding is, I was looking at this and the insight was, well, it takes us two weeks a lot of the time to get a transcript to a taking attorney. Why does it take that long? Well, first of all, it's because so much work needs to be done. The steno is not effective enough to get an accurate enough record. So it takes this steno operator many, many hours outside the deposition room just to clean up the draft and so forth. And so that led me to think, well, wait a second, we've got to pay for that labor anyway. My healthcare customers, insurance customers, they expect stuff back in hours or a day at the most, not weeks. Uh, they'd never tolerate that. And so I thought, why couldn't we just stack multiple transcribers up and provide it uh, during the proceeding? And in fact, I found that our premium customers, the ones with really deep pockets that cared a lot more about the quality and the experience they got than how much it cost, they would order real-time reporting for us. Now we can't provide it a lot because so few Stenro operators could even do it. But I was kind of like thinking, well, the technologies that we have available along with the shift in the business model where we stack people up during the deposition and we empower them with AI that we already have that required you know, minimal adaptation uh, to get this done could allow us to provide that real-time experience to all litigators, not ones that have 20 or $30,000 to spend in a week on a series of depositions, but ones that only have you know, the conventional amount to spend. And I thought if we could make that available to, to everybody, that would be really cool. And to Dean's credit, he helped me understand things like access to justice and the pace of justice and so forth that really resonate in the legal community to see how, how this would really help everybody benefit. So the tech insight was that we could set all these people up to edit the document simultaneously so we could provide the equivalent of real-time reporting. And then when we have a draft that's really good, there's no reason that we can't provide a rough uh, within an hour. And when I say that, I, we haven't talked about rates yet, but we're going to use, you know, simple, low, flat rates. And so we're not going to nickel and dime. If you're not accustomed to ordering a rough because you don't want to pay extra for it, but it would help a little, you can have it anyway. And we're not going to charge extra to get you the, uh, like an expedite fee to get you this uh, certified transcript in a day. That's just going to be our standard uh, operating model. So our best work all the time. Tyson, I wanted to yes, jump you... in. Uh, if I could jump yeah. in on the, on the access to justice piece really critical. Uh, I'd like to underscore that the cost to have a real live feed in front of you as an attorney and to get a rough draft and then a certified transcript in one day is exorbitant. And why shouldn't every litigator 
right? Regardless of their client's pocketbook, have the ability at standard rates to get a premium service. And Nick always likes to say in everything we do, when we work in the healthcare industry, the insurance industry, we work with lawyers all over the place. He likes to say we as a company enable professionals to operate at the top of their game with all of these efficiencies. So to, to Nick's credit, we've, we've done a tremendous job at implementing something that I think makes sense, is gonna revolutionize the industry. And uh, I, I think that, uh, you know, after the Max Law Conference, which by the way, Tyson, the Max Law Conference, that, that was unbelievable. It was awesome. A after that conference, we had so much engagement. We have conversations going in 16 different states right now with, with just, re yeah, regular folks that, that are litigators that are saying, and at first, they kind of looking out of the corner of their eyes saying, what is this? Tell me about this. And, not, and they're going, oh, one day? Yes, let me try this. So thank you. Yeah, you bet. I'm, I'm glad you liked it. It was, uh, it's a great group. But let, let me ask you something, because I, um, I, I, I've had conversations with the court reporters about this, and they're, they're excited because all that back-end work, right? They've got all that freaking back-end work that after the deposition that they don't have to worry about right like all that all that kind of goes away for the court reporter right they they don't have to because most of it is done for them they're just going in there and, and, and fine-tuning making sure it's all accurate am i am i understanding that correctly that's right tyson so the court reporter still has an immense amount of responsibility to ensure that the proceeding is conducted fairly that everything is captured there's no inaudibles and that the that the transcript built, gets built properly but instead of working madlessly to, to punch the keys to try to get 80% of the record that they'll go fix with a digital recording over the coming couple of weeks, they can literally just monitor the construction of the, of the document so that they're essentially proofing it uh, in real time you know, while it's happening. So instead of you know, working against deadlines and being up until midnight or 2 a.m. the day before something's due or something, they, they've gotten it off their plate. They can ship that rough off, you know, an hour later and uh, and sign off and certify the, the other a day later, because like you said, the work's getting done. And a really important thing is when we switched to primarily virtual proceedings during the pandemic, we found that lawyers had a love hate relationship with the switch. I think it went way better than most litigators thought it would go. But the number one complaint we heard from them was, I'm trying to take a deposition here. I don't want to fumble with technology, including showing exhibits. I worry a little bit that I'll share the wrong screen or the, you know, I'm, I'm on my game. I'm trying to prosecute this line of questioning and the witness is saying, no, I don't see what you're talking about. They don't really want that responsibility. And so when we free up the reporter to be what we're now calling a guardian of the record, we can allow her or him uh, to serve and actually uh, not only mark exhibits, but, but share them and so forth, really taking away one of the primary objections that uh, lawyers have shared with us about, uh, about doing virtual proceedings. Have you had any pushback um, when it comes to like, just like the legality of it? I mean, it, everything from what I can tell seems pretty kosher, but have you, have you had any pushback? That I yeah. About? Well, so I'm not a lawyer, so I'm going to turn it over to Dean, but we, we all know that the, the circumstances of each jurisdiction have to be taken into consideration and lawyers need to make those decisions. But, and that's one of the reasons we have a chief legal officer. And uh, I bet nobody has studied this uh, more closely than Dean over the last uh, six to nine months. But uh, you know, we're, we're going to continue to help people understand, to inform and influence rule makers, and uh, provide information to help customers uh, reach good conclusions. And you know, Dean, you can, you can talk rules. Yeah, yeah. so Reback complies with the rules of civil procedure. And one of the things that uh, we have to look at, obviously, is Rule 30 uh, in each, each uh, jurisdiction. And, and Rule 30 has its own number in each state. Um, and the federal rule uh, 30 and 29. So when you look at those rules, right, uh, the attorney can give in his notice that the deposition is going to be conducted and that there's going to be an audio capture of the deposition and we're going to provide the audio. So that's first the official record you can use is the audio, perfectly compliant with both federal and state rules. 
most state rules. There are some archaic rules out there that need to be shifted and we're working on that. And then we're gonna also supply the certified transcript of that. And when you look at, there might be some purists out there that say, well, this isn't done by stenographic means because some of the rules will put stenographic means, but rule 29 allows for attorneys to stipulate to alternative means. And Jim Garrity that, uh, that Nick pointed to, he's the author of the book, 10,000 Depositions Later. In, in talking about doing depositions by alternative means, he talks about the, the ability to stipulate. So, you know, it's, it's legal in most states as far as the rules and in the states where it's ambiguous, I, I, I wonder what an attorney is going to be greeted at if he goes into federal court or a state court and objects based on it being non-stenographic means, if it's a verbatim transcript and you have the audio to verify it. So, yeah, Dean, well, either Lord, way, I mean, it's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead Nick. I'm just going to mention that again, I'm not an attorney like you guys are, but Dean pointed to some case law to me where somebody did object and for a different service, not for ours. And the judge said, well, if there's an audio recording, uh, it's asked and answered, like, it doesn't matter how and when it was transcribed and stuff. And, and Tyson, I, I want to drive that point home because we've been talking about, you know, certified in a day, rough in an hour and so forth. But one of the things that we did, decided to do, one of the sacred cows we decided to tip over is uh, the audio recording. As you may know, there's, there's a fair amount of case law out there that says that uh, certified court reporters uh, whatever they put in that certified transcript is the record of what happened, even if lawyers don't agree with it. And generally speaking, courts have held, as I understand it, that uh, the audio recordings that those reporters have are protected under work product rules. So if you're an attorney and you say, hey, there is an audio recording, I don't agree that that's what my client said or that's what the witness said. Can we have the audio recording? The courts have said, no, we're just going to make it available. We figure... Uh, what could be wrong with transparency on something so important? So the on, re on the record recording is going to be delivered with the certified transcript and uh, just another sacred cow down. So tell me this, is there gonna be a court reporter there as well? So the court reporter, so we're, we're bifurcating essentially uh, or separating the, the the functions of the court reporter, Tyson, as you conventionally thought of it. So we have a, there will be a person and just so we're clear and uh, not mislabeling, we're gonna call that person a guardian of the record that will sort of officiate the proceeding just like a court reporter does and be responsible for uh, the certification, swearing of oaths, the, the things that you're used to. The difference is that person will not be burdened by pounding the keyboard and will be available to provide technical support, sharing of exhibits and so forth. Then we have this team that I've talked about. We call it the MIST or the Multi-Intelligent Service Team. So imagine four people that are not present in the proceeding. One of them is listening to the proceeding in real time, typing, editing uh, the, the AI output. A second one is listening about on a 10 second delay so that they can correct any errors left behind by the first one, the third, another 10 second delay and so forth. So that's how in less than a minute, you have uh, what we call real time and near time would be a fraction of a second. So near time is a coined we phrase to mean fraction of a minute, uh, accurate uh, verbatim transcript. I mean, that's pretty incredible. I mean, the, <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot more going into that than uh, I think most people think. That, that's actually a really, really cool thing. What, what interests me is actually probably something that Nick, you might not think about. It's what interests me is using this for my client's depositions where someone else is deposing it. And I would actually want to bring you all in because I would like to see what it says, what the transcript says from my clients. Cause I was like, did, did my client really say that? And so I would, I would like to see yeah. it from that perspective. Yeah, it's interesting. We've, we've interviewed a number of our clients that were relying on real time and again, paying those big bucks for that to be done by stenographic means. And I just ate up understanding how and why they saw value in that. And, uh, you know, again, I won't, I won't pretend to be a lawyer, even to play one on a podcast, but it's fascinating, right? If you think about other fields, um, think about an NFL quarterback or a news anchor or these people who 
you know, go into a performance where the outcome is really important. They, in other fields, they almost always have uh, assistance that's off camera whether it's the quarterback with the speaker in the ear from the box that had a different perspective or the offensive line coach or the, the news anchor that appears to be doing everything on their own, but they have a producer that's helping them out and so forth. And um, everybody will use this different, uh, I suppose, based on what they want to do. But we think taking a deposition or even um, uh, uh, defending a witness or, or representing a witness can become a team sport. You could do some fact checking on the fly. You can, uh, you know, rely on a co-counsel that has a little different perspective or an expert that says, well, wait a second, they just got away with saying X, Y, Z, you need to drill down into this. And the way we'll do that is that on the screen, we have what we call the rough viewer that any attorney using uh, readback will be able to see. And we'll have annotations off to the right and each party will have separate annotations. So uh, if you had someone listening in from back at your office that was doing fact checking or a co-counsel in another firm, uh, they could highlight a little text and say, we'd really like you to get some clarification on this, or this technically isn't true. Try to get them to go further here. And uh, you can just see that while you're deposing or, or representing the witness and um, interact. So it's pretty cool. And, and Tyson, you know, uh you indicated that you'd like to use it potentially to see what your client's saying. What I'm surprised at in speaking with litigators is the number of attorneys that have never been exposed to real time. So think about the shift from waiting two or three weeks from your deposition to getting it in one day, the ability to move that file, right? And sometimes we as litigators stack depositions, right? We might want to do three in a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, it's on the same case. Being able to use that transcript from deposition one, especially if the stacking is important and the, and the questioning might, might change based on the answers, having the ability to review that, doing your deposition summaries, um, moving the files. We think that by speeding up the process, instead of the lawyer taking his file and putting it in the corner of his desk and then digging it out a month later when he gets the transcript or two weeks later, this is, going to, this is going to be able to contemporaneously move those files quicker. That's, that, that's a good point. I, it's something I actually had not thought about. I mean, we'll stack you know, multiple depositions on a day. It would be, be great just to be like, okay, let's look, let's look at this you know, transcript that we have right now. You know, it's not the perfect transcript, but I can see you know, what they said and I can use it for the next deposition that's in an hour. Um, yeah, I think that that would sure. be a lot of help too. Wait a second, Nick said this. Are you contradicting Nick? I've got it right here. You know, right. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, Dean, let me ask you this. Is this something that's available now or is this something that uh, we're going to have to wait for? Yeah, so we're making it available to the Max Law Conference people and anybody out there in Max Law that wants to call us. You know, readback.legal. They can contact us, go on the website, they register. There's no fee or obligation register, go in the site, poke around. We got a library in there. We've got uh, discussions of compliance. Once they register, we're going to send them a welcoming email describing it some more, reach out to them and say, would you like to see it? Would you like to try it? So yes, it's available, but only to Max Law and our existing clients. Yeah, we're calling it an early access program, Tyson. And we're going to do this for between now and the end of the year or the first of 2022 to make sure that we scale in a, in a disciplined way and uh, focus primarily on uh, the quality of the services that we're providing, learn as much as we can uh, from those early access customers, and uh, then, then go to full market, a general release in early 2022. Very cool. All right, who wants the last word? I'll give you the last word. Oh, I like to say, just from the concept of starting a, a conversation, even if rhetorical, once you learn about all these capabilities as a litigator, what will you do with active reporting? Is that, are you asking me or is that just the rhetorical question that you kind of rhetor everybody it's for, out it's, there? It's for everybody listening because I, I think it's something to be figured out, right? If somebody shows you <clears throat> a new uh, gadget with 12 bells and whistles, you may not be able to even figure that out in 10 minutes, right? That might, in fact, well, I assume that some people will start by saying, hey, one day is better than two weeks, so give me that. 
And after they've done 10 depositions, they might be, well, maybe I will take a look at this near time text. I mean, I thought it might be distracting, but maybe I can learn something or I've learned from people in the community, whether it's the maximum lawyer community or people in the, the readback specific community that share best practices and say, let me tell you how, how this helps. Um, so we're kind of excited about starting that conversation. Tyson, well, you I know, I'm, I'm a lawyer. Yeah. I'm not, even though he's my CEO, I'm not giving him the last word. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to say, A, thank you for this, for this opportunity to get out to your audience. And B, the conference itself, what I was impressed with, and I signed up as an attorney, and so I, I was in on all, virtually all of the speeches. There wasn't any discussion of substantive law. There wasn't, I didn't, you didn't go there to learn how to do a case or a specific area of law. It was how to be a better person, how to be a better lawyer, how to, how to operationalize your office and, and efficient. And the speakers you had, authentic, real, and many of them had stories where they had bottomed out for this, that, or the other thing had come and come out of the ashes and are doing great now. Tremendous. It, it, it kept it real. And I, I really appreciated being there. Thank you. It, like I said, it's a, it's a really good group of people. It was a, it was one of those things where, you know, we were just so impressed by the speakers. It was such a cool event. Um, for those of you that missed it, sorry, hope you can come next year, but it was, it was really cool. So I'm glad. And thank you all, by the way, for sponsoring it because it would not have been possible without you um, and, and our other sponsors. Uh, it, it was a tremendous amount of support because as you can tell, it was a big event. It was way bigger than what we'd ever done before. So we really needed the support from you all. So as one of our title sponsors, we could not, we could not have done it without you. So thank you so much for that as well. Thank you. All right. So if everyone's anyone's interested in readback, uh, go to readback.legal. There's actually app.readback.legal forward slash sign up. Um, you can go that's, dr that's directly to the sign up in the and we'll have that in the show notes. I also have it in the comment section in the Facebook group. Um, Nick, Dean, thank you so much for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, Tyson.